Friends, I'm Dr. Vignesh, consultant rheumatologist from Apex Center for Rheumatology, Hanukkah. As a part venture along with uh, Assure Medical Foundation, uh, we are here in uh, the fair end of the classes on the rapid crash course on rheumatology based on Harrison based medicine. So due to want of time and exams going into the nearby schedules, I am not uh, preparing any powerpoints to make you understand think things because we have a very short time to complete. So let me go through the individual topics through Harrison with appropriate pictures if needed as and when from the Google assistance and I would like to complete each and every of the pending topics. Okay, the first video would be on inflammatory myopathies. Okay, so inflammatory myopathies is supposed to be a pure neurology topic, but 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 majority a bulk of patients with an insidious onset, gradually progressing muscle weakness is potential to be improved by immunosuppressive therapy. So any patient with proximal muscle weakness has to be evaluated for inflammatory myopathy. So we have a variety of inflammatory myopathies and we have a variety of differential diagnosis for the same. So the first one is going to be your dermatomyositis. That is as the name indicates, as the name indicates, you have the involvement of skin that is dermatomyositis. Polymyositis, you don't have involvement of your skin. Okay, so then what you have is a necrotizing myopathy that is called as NM, and then is amino acyl tRNA synthetase syndrome, and the last one being inclusion body myositis. So these are the one, two, three, four, and five clinical classifications of inflammatory myopathy. Okay. A lot of MCQs can be asked from this chapter. So please, please be attentive. So we will come to the table which is given here at the end of the class so that you would be able to understand the table easier. Or what we would do is we'll finish each and individual inflammatory muscle disease and then come over here for discussing the table. Okay, so you need to know which disease occurs in children, which disease occurs in adult. Polymyositis is a disease that occurs almost always in adulthood only. So a diagnosis of juvenile polymyositis is not an acceptable diagnosis whereas dermatomyositis can be seen in children and adulthood, necrotizing myopathy, children and adulthood, ASS, children and adulthood, whereas inclusion body myositis is only seen in elderly patients. Okay. Majority of your inflammatory myopathies are female predominant, whereas necrotizing myopathy has an equal male female predominance, whereas inclusion body myositis is common in males. Okay, so these are the characteristic age of onset differences which you should know. Okay, then presence of rashes as characteristic of dermatomyositis. Patients with dermatomyositis may or may not have the skin rashes that have been reported in dermatomyositis and they have a peculiar type of uh, peculiar type of rash which is called as mechanics hands. I'll come to that later. So, so this is I'll stop discussing this table until this point of time because you need to know the epidemiology that is given in these pages in Harrison in this particular region of Harrison. So male and female predominance equal predominance it's in necrotizing myopathy. Which of the following inflammatory diseases is common in males? The answer is inclusion body myositis. Okay, all of the following inflammatory muscle disease are common in females except that could be an answer as inclusion body myositis. Elderly population myopathy, okay, which is having a peculiar presentation, you have to always think of inclusion body myositis. So in this uh, place of uh, diagnostic approach and differential diagnosis, he has discussed in general like how do you approach for a patient with a muscle weakness. Yes, whenever a patient has a muscle weakness, what do you mean to say is that the patient is having quadriparasis, that is patient is having weakness of all the four extremities. Okay, so when a patient has a weakness in all the four extremities, you need to rule out whether it is an upper motor neuron lesion or a lower motor neuron lesion so that you know from the basic medicine and neurology knowledge. So when I am discussing about the lower motor neuron lesions, 
it can be either arising from your anterior horn okay or it can be arising from the peripheral nerve it can be from the neuromuscular junction or it could be from the muscle okay so you need to ask for individual questionings to structurally localize the site of involvement of a muscle weakness so if the patient has human features you would think of the cerebral hemispheres and spinal cord as the source of weakness and if it is LMN, you would think of anterior horn cell, peripheral nerve, neuromuscular junction and muscle involvement. The characteristic feature of anterior horn cell involvement is presence of fasciculation okay, and presence of atrophy more more severe than the presence of weakness. That is atrophy starts first and weakness comes later. When you discuss a peripheral neuropathy, it can be a pure motor peripheral neuropathy, it can be a sensory motor peripheral neuropathy, it can be a mixed. So when a patient is having muscle weakness and the patient is also having uh, sensory neural disturbance and it is an element lesion, it's most likely because of the peripheral nerve. Okay, and neuromuscular junction, when there is fatigability, when there is a component of fatigability in each and every activity, you must always think of neuromuscular junction involvement and when you are discussing with a pure motor weakness not because of anti cell involvement not because of a motor nerve involvement and not because of a neuromuscular junction involvement and it is an element lesion it is most likely because of your muscle okay so there are characteristic features to dealing it each and every inflammatory muscle disease okay so we'll come to that later okay uh, so the tools that are used are your clinical examination Okay, the pattern of muscle weakness, clinical examination, muscle biopsy, response to therapy and common associated conditions which, with which you will be able to differentiate each of the inflammatory muscle diseases. Okay, right. Now let us start with dermatomyositis. Okay, so forget about the tables of Harrison. Just have a look at this picture. Yes. So which of the following is or are the hallmark features or pathognomonic features of dermatomyositis. So if I want to say an answer, the options could be either heliotrap rash or Gottrans papules, V sign, Shawl sign, nail changes. Among these five, the Gottrans papules, which are papular eruptions seen over the knuckles, MCP and PIP joints. Okay, and when these uh, papules are, when these erythematous lesions are papules, they call it as a Gottrans papule. And if these lesions are seen as what you say as a macule, you call it as a Gottrans sign. So it is pathognomonic of pathognomonic of dermatomyositis. Okay, heliotrope rash. So I will show you a heliotrope rash, right? Heliotrope rash. So the term heliotrope rash comes from a heliotrope flower, which looks violaceous and pinkish in color. Okay, and patients with dermatomyositis used to get such a, a violaceous or erythematous rash around the upper eyelid. Okay, and remember we discussed while well, discussing yesterday, we also discussed that the malar rash of dermatomyositis does not spare the nasolabial fold. So this is a very good, beautiful example of showing you how things are going. So this is again a violaceous uh, heliotrope rash, which must be going. I will show you the color of a heliotrope flower, so you would understand why this. Yeah, so it is a violet colored flower and that is why they are calling it as a heliotrope rash. So this is again a pathognomonic feature of dermatomyositis. So other features are non-specific. So this is nothing but your V sign that is photosensitive rash over the anterior aspect of the neck which is exposed to sun. Okay, that is called as V sign. So in the shape of V you have a photosensitive rash. And over the back what you have is a shawl sign okay the place where people wear shawl like people wear the shawl over your uh, over the over the back over the back and in those places if you're getting a photosensitive rash again because many of them don't wear a shawl and it is a sun exposed area where you can have a photosensitive rash similar to systemic sclerosis you can have abnormal nail fold capillary changes that are characteristic of characteristic of your dermatomyositis so 
the questions could be which of the following is not a pathognomonic feature the answers they would have given nail changes v sign and sol sign because they are not very very pathognomonic gotran papules can occur on the knuckles they can occur on the elbows okay so these are all about the skin rashes what you must be knowing so when you find a patient with muscle weakness with the following skin rashes you should suspect dermatomyositis okay so now let us go into the topic of dermatomyositis so it is a disease which can be seen in both children and adults okay and these are the i have talked about the pathognomonic signs and the non pathognomonic signs okay so it is a proximal more than distal weakness patients might have a heliotrope rash gotran sign which is a macule gotran papule it is a papule okay it is an erythematous macule we call it a sign an erythematous raised rash we call it as a papule okay it is not based on the location of the rash it is based on the consistency of the rash v sign i told you shawl sign i showed you okay so weakness and rash usually accompany one another but yes there can be a time lapse patients might develop skin lesion first and develop weakness later and patients might develop weakness first and they develop skin rashes in a later date so there is a group of disease which is called as a myopathic dermatomyositis which is associated with a specific antibody which is called as mda5 or cadm antibody so this antibody association is for the fact that patient would have only a skin rash which is pathognomonic of dermatomyositis but the patient would not have clinical muscle weakness or radiologic biochemical features of muscle weakness okay then patients can also have difficulty in breathing difficulty in swallowing and difficulty in articulating majority of the time dysarthria dysphagia we always think of a bulbar palsy okay but you have to keep a muscle weakness because of dermatomyositis or polymyositis or inclusion body myositis as a part of the differential for a bulbar weakness okay and apart from apart from other things one thing i would like to stress you is that treating the muscle disease treating the muscle disease by assessing the muscle weakness and assessing the muscle enzymes is as equally important as that of treating a cutaneous way disease that is cutaneous disease is also equally important to be treated so the activity scores include the activity of the skin in 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 a real specific manner okay and because skin lesions would reduce the quality of life and sometimes the pruritus caused by these skin lesions might be very 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 debilitating okay so if you see a patient with dermatomyositis with a breathing difficulty so what have what you what should you suspect the first one what you suspect is the respiratory muscle weakness because it's a proximal muscle weakness affecting the skeletal muscles so you might affect, expect a ventilatory muscle defect or otherwise patients can also have interstitial lung disease bronchopneumonia or alveolitis sometimes patients can develop a rapidly progressive rapidly progressive interstitial lung disease which is again associated with anti mda5 okay so these are the causes of a patient with muscle weakness having dermatomyositis okay and manifestations are often associated with anti synthetic antibodies yes see this is another rot antibody that is seen in patients with dermatomyositis and it is commonly associated with this particular thing whereas the thing what i expressed as a rapidly progressive muscle disease it is very specific for anti mda5 antibodies okay so myositis associated with amino acyl tr anti synthetic antibodies that is anti synthetic antibodies it's a specific spectrum that we need to discuss okay and uh, among the inflammatory muscle diseases dermatomyositis is the one that is having a highest risk of malignancy so this is another potential mcq which of the following is having the highest potential risk of malignancy okay especially the malignancy risk only is only for the first 2 to 3 years so, so this is again a very 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 important point okay so when you see a patient with dermatomyositis and he in in him or her you suspect in him or her you suspect malignancy and that has to be supposedly in the first 2 to 3 years okay next 